That's it's, right. It's like, but I'm not, one thing that I do have going for me is I'm not afraid to ask for help. And here's why you should help Rabbi Raz. Here's why you should support me because, you know, I do so much for you with the Torah talks and with, with, the, with my essays here on MySpace. And this is really my medium. I'm suited for, like, writing on the internet and communicating with people because I have so many people who, who, uh, you know, want to communicate with me on MySpace. MySpace is a good place for Jews. So you got to watch out. There are all sorts of Jewish things on MySpace that call themselves Jewish. They're pure kafira, pure kafira, heresy. You want to stay away. And then I'm going to Torah, H.com, stay away. Ask Moses, stay away. <clears throat> Let me tell you about women and how they really work. And uh, they seem kind of inscrutable and they, they speak in riddles. But uh, here I'm going to help you uncode the riddles. Not that it did me any good, because I'm going to go my whole life and I'm never going to get married. Never, ever, ever. My life is just misery. My life is hell. I want to be inscribed in the book of death this year. My life hurts so much. It's just one unending series of misery. And, and the Jewish holidays, you think the Jewish holidays are so great? The Jewish holidays suck. Because what can I do on a Jewish holiday? All I can do is just stay home and eat tuna fish. That's all I can do. I never learned how to cook because I thought I was going to get married. Did I ever get married? No. I never got married. I did meet this one great girl. She was converting to Judaism and she worked so hard. And I thought, wow, I have so much respect for this girl. She's really got it going on. But because she couldn't afford to live near her rabbi, one of the most expensive areas in all of California, she gave up on her conversion right before Yom Kippur. That hit me so hard. I was just devastated. I was suicidal. I was just like totally down. I was like, oh, I was in so much pain. It was just a horrible, 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 terrible, awful situation after that. Then I met another girl, and it was so right, and we were so good for each other, but we had no panasa, and if you just help us make a living and so we can make a nice wedding, oh, but that's not going to work out either. My mother didn't like me. Mothers, they're just out to get me. And the Froom community, they just don't understand me, and they ask inappropriate questions, and they try to push alcohol on me. Mothers? <laughs> you got any more? I thought that was a pretty good summary of your book. <laughs> Levy, he's going to be here all week. That was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Oh my god, you're in such a roll. Okay, there's no question you absolutely read the entire book. Okay. <laughs> you, you covered all of it. I've never seen somebody compile all of it together like that. So that's what you call um, a whale. Yeah, it was like Eka. It was Eka, right? Yeah. It's like, this is how bad it can be. Yeah. Okay, now you have to understand, how did it start? How did I start writing that? Why did I start writing it? Because I could have died and not spit it out. And I felt it needed to get out. Yeah. I felt that my story needs to get out, and I got it out, you know, yeah. and that's the book. Yeah. I don't, you asked me before, when I handed it to you the first time, you said, what's this, how do you describe your book? I was like, I don't know how to describe it. So it's a whale, it's an echa. It's when, when you feel everything is going wrong. Yeah. Okay, so, so now that's my book. Now, they, now that's the background. What was the question that you asked me? Something based on that book, because we were talking about the 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 uh, how do people, what kind of people would I feel comfortable with? Yeah, and, and I, the question I, of uh, oh oh well, okay well I was making the point you said it. This is my main point. You were complaining about Fr Frumi's asking where do you delve in, and, and I was making the point that from your book I gather even walking down Pico Boulevard. Yeah on Shabbat is a horrible experience for you. It can be. It can be. So almost everything, like going to someone's home, like filled with children, is a horrible experience no, I don't for do, you. I don't even do it. You I, don't I, even I, do I that. Like, that. Um, so, you know, if walking around the neighborhood is a horrible experience, and going to someone's home filled with children is a horrible experience, um, pretty much everything is a horrible experience, except for going surfing. Going surfing is my big escape. Yeah. I did a chapter on surfing. Yeah. It's yeah. my big escape. It's yeah. not even... You would think that, oh, he must love surfing, so he just 
He's in a rush and he goes there. It's still difficult for me to go. Because I have to fight through the whole agoraphobia thing and my OCD with all of my rituals just to get out of the house mm -hmm. to do anything. I, it, just like leaving the house is a horrible experience. It's a time. major thing to get yeah. out of the house. And, like, you know, I can go days without actually stepping foot out of the house. Yeah. Okay? Um, I didn't leave the house on Yom Kippur. Wow. So I went from, like, Friday. Friday, I uh, went out, like, around 1. Mm hmm. I, you know, I took out the trash, and I, 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 I made a, I had to go run an errand by foot, and I came back, and I think the next time I stepped out of the house was, uh, was Saturday night, late Saturday night. And it's hard for me to get out of the house. What I would have loved in, in the book is like a, um, a diagnosis, like you, you mentioned, like, one of your shrinks said, Agoraphobia on steroids. I saw that you wrote yeah. that, and I was I was thinking. Let me just interrupt you. I was I was I saw that because you quoted on the web. But you got to realize, when I wrote that, that was four years ago. But since that time, I went back to that psychiatrist. Yeah. In two thousand and nine. Yeah. And he said, no, you don't have that. He re he said you have OCD, which I did mention at the end of yeah. it. Yeah. That he changed it, and he said you just have OCD. I have a really severe form of OCD. He said I basically have the same form that Howard Hughes had. Right. Now, I don't know how many people are familiar with the Howard Hughes story, yeah. and I really wasn't at the time. So he told me to do some research on Howard Hughes. So, you know, I watched, you know, I yeah. I watched all these movies about yeah. him, these documentaries, yeah. and I read about him, and, like, a lot of it hit home. Yeah. A lot of it hit home, you know. And uh, so I'm like the modern-day Howard Hughes. And then he's... He said, "Paranoia." He said, "Like, well, yeah, paranoia is a big part of agoraphobia. It's a big part of OCD." Oh, okay. It's it all really runs together. Depression, chronic depression. You know, really depressed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, anxiety, uh, social anxiety, different types of anxieties, different types of phobias, OCD, agoraphobia. It all, according to my psych the psychiatrist, mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm. comes from like the same part of the brain. Mm -hmm. It's a certain chemical that's been released, you know, and they put me on Prozac mm -hmm. to try to uh, block. Yeah. They want you want to block that thing that's being released in your brain. There's a certain chemical that's being released in your brain. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, the, the the shrinks think they can stop everything with medicine. You know what Prozac did? You know what Prozac did for me? It kept me from getting a hard on. No, oh, that's good. <laughs> That's what it did. Because this is a very small room. <laughs> so, <laughs> if Rav's like suddenly got a woody, there'd be a lot less air in the room. Well, you know what? Let me tell you that, what, that this is what happens. I, I, I made the joke that it was a good thing, you know, because they put me on pro because I was really depressed after my engagement ended. Now, you were really depressed your whole life. But, but, yeah, but I was like just really, really yeah. suicidal mm -hmm. right after my engagement ended. I was mm -hmm. like, that's it. So they put me on Prozac, and you know, in a very short time, I could no longer get a hard on. I couldn't. It was like numb down there. I, even when I wanted to manufacture, mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. Well, that, well that, that, that's good. And I used to joke, and I said, you know what? It's a good thing that we're not married. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't get married because I would need Viagra right. at this point, you know, or Cialis or whatever. And you know, and even when I stopped doing. Prozac. I went off of it a year ago. I went off of it. That effect stayed with me, and it scared me for a while. I was like, oh, "Am I dead down there now?" <laughs> and, uh, it took a long time. That's a weird side effect to that drug. If I, I, I tell people, they say, "What am I going to do?" You know, I, you know, Rabbi, I can't stop. Uh, you know, thinking about women. I can't stop masturbating. I'm like, take Prozac. It will kill you down there. It yeah. will end it. And you can get them dirt cheap. You can go to like uh, Walmart. If you get a prescription for Prozac, you can pick up like a whole thing for like four bucks. You know, it's a dirt cheap pill now. Prozac, I don't know, the other one, they make one that's just like it. I don't remember what it is. But you can get them generic and, you, and it will stop everything down there. It should. And you will not masturbate anymore. 
I can turn I can turn you into a non-masturbator 